Get informed. Oh, current events. Okay. Get informed with Andy Rocco. I'm Andy Rocco. This is Get Informed, UCB Radio, Sirius XM 406. I don't uh, really know the news super well, but I get my super funny friends to come on the show and tell me what's going on in the world. We discuss what's current events that are going on. Today, uh, helping me co-host the show is Miss Caitlin Bitsagai. Hello, hello. Thank you. You're going to be uh, reading the news mm-hmm. and fact-checking whenever you have to. Yep. And, Manning uh, the Lisa your, desk. You, yes. Uh, Lisa Herring is, has to has a little family thing that she had to go do. So uh, hope everything turns out okay. And also it's Passover. so Big time for the Jews. Yes, big time for the Jews. And that Jewish voice right there is our producer <laughs> and writer. All around funny guy, Jason <laughs> Shabiro. Yep. Can you hear the Judaism through the microphone? What a fucking Jew. All right. Okay. Wow. Hey. Oh. Welcome to Serious <laughs> Nazi yeah. Radio. Just... And that voice was, he's not a dog, it's Alan Serzinski. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> okay. Not a dog. Just not fact a dog. check. Just fact check that. Not a dog. Thank you. Just checking in case people want to know. I'm sorry for the anti-Semitism right uh, up top. I don't think it's anti-Semitic to call someone a Jew. I think it's <laughs> pointing out, you know, how great they are. It's like a compliment. I agree. Right. Calling somebody a Jew is not an insult, but calling them a fucking Jew feels. Yeah. It feels, feels a little like, overly aggressive, I, maybe unnecessary, especially on uh, Pesach of all days on Passover. But you know, whatever. I well, I was only just quoting what was in the bathroom walls yep. that said that Jason Shabiro fucks <laughs> all the time. Oh, oh my God, I'm a fucking Jew. Yeah. Yeah, okay. you're a okay. fucking Jew. Oh. That's the adjective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Okay. I was saying well, that's, that's that you have a very promiscuous you lifestyle. You are a slut. Oh. You're a slut. You're a slutty, slutty, slutty Jew. You guys, Jews can't be sluts. Is that true? Yep, just like black people can't be racist. It's just uh, one of the rules. Okay. Mm. Mm, all right. I'll fact check that. But this, fact yeah. check it, <laughs> yes. Could you fact check it real quick? Yes. Uh, but uh, this is a show about current events. Uh, we got a lot of current stuff that's been going on this week. Uh, Caitlin, you want to tell us our first uh, story? All right. We got the 10th anniversary start of U.S. invasion of Iraq. Yay! Has it Ooh. been 10 years? Guys, it feels like it was just yesterday. <laughs> it does yeah. kind of feel. Uh, yeah. for, as of uh, Tuesday, March 19th. The you mark the anniversary of the U.S. No, that's uh, so. Uh, why are we celebrating this? I guess was the question. I are people? I don't know if people are really celebrating. I guess it's, it's more of just being bummed. You guys haven't <laughs> been to the parties. <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't been to Calico Jacks uh, on Thirteenth Street. They had the a drink specials. Yeah. <laughs> they just like play clips of the Iraq War. <laughs> um, yeah. Forty-five hundred shots for every dead soldier. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Okay. All right. Oh. Well, it's a good deal. <laughs> it is a good deal. Um, so, was it worth going into Iraq, uh, pulling out our troops in Iraq? What, what, we where, are, where, where are we at with the troops these where, days? Where What's going we? on? I mean, we never like the official military action has ended in Iraq. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're in Obama's pulling them out, or he they are yeah. out, or they are they are pulled out. Like, yeah. I don't think that there are any U.S. troops left in there except for like. There probably are bases there that except will for the ones that there. fell in love. Right. With yeah, some except the ones that fell in love. <laughs> yeah, and the ones that just have good business deals over there. <laughs> We've got some yeah. bodegas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh wow, um, it works like in reverse. There, there's usually Amer- Iraqis here running bodegas, right? Uh, mm-hmm. I think you're thinking of. I mean, bodega implies that they are Hispanic. Is it? Oh, I don't think so. But no, it's a Spanish that, word. Just, it yeah, is a that's Spanish how it word. Started, but I feel like lots of Middle Eastern people in bodegas. Yeah. yeah right. Maybe not Iraqis. Not Iraqis. I feel like they're mostly further east. Pakistan. Yeah, are they, which aren't really Middle Eastern. There's not yeah. a lot of like oh, Iranians. I, that's, I, that's Middle Eastern. I, I, mean, was, always, uh, I was always in, under the impression Iraqis are always rocking yeah. <laughs> inside of a bodega, selling some wares. Yep, that's well, true. That ABC true. News reports that 58% of Americans do not think that we should have gone to Iraq. Oh, no, we definitely should have. There was no grounds for us to go in. Like It was like all... Pretty much bullshit. But is I am I wrong in thinking I'm just it's not a doesn't it need some democracy though? Like uh, I mean, it's yeah. like women are getting that's the country oh, where women yeah, are getting yeah. stoned. That's in, that's <laughs> not just in that country. It's in a lot of them. But it's like 
our, our grounds to go in there were completely like falsified. Like it's true. the weapons like, of mass destruction was yeah. the reason that mm. was given. And Donald Donald Rumsfeld will like he'll still argue it, even though it's like we know you're a liar. We know you're a liar. It's like going, should we have gone to Vietnam? No, no. That's mm. like that's like known. But this I was think, Vietnam. So for Vietnam our though posed was really posed no even threat of a threat. They were just an ideological difference. They were an right? ideological yeah. Threat. So Iraq, I think, had an ideological difference, but also was gussied up as like, also they're gonna have nukes or chemical weapons right. or something. So we need to right. solve this thing. So, but they, but they were lying. They were lying. Of course, they were lying. As we all, ten years back, we get to look at this I, thing and say, hey, I they were say, fucking lying. But for, was, as far as Vietnam, I think we should have went because then we would have not had a great vehicle for Robin Williams to be taken seriously as an actor in Good Morning Vietnam. That is a right. good point. I think that he was his most serious. And Popeye. Have you guys seen World's Greatest Dad? I heard that's amazing. It's a really good movie. Oh, the Bobcat movie? No. Yeah. But uh, one thing I should say I don't mind that we went to war in Iraq, even though it was horrifying. Uh, A lot of my Fox News buddies, because I'm friends with everyone at Fox News, because everyone in the media is friends, uh, (laughs) they say, yep, they're like, uh, you know, only time will tell if it was a good action or a bad action. Now, I think all war sucks. Ugh. What? That's kind of a lame. They, well, they say history might look back on George Bush as one of our greatest presidents. That's clearly not true. Yeah. But what mm-hmm. I will say is this. Saddam Hussein, uh, fanatic dictator, committing atrocities on human rights, civil rights, women's rights, yeah. against his own people, murdering his own family. Uh, and I believe that he's in the category of dangerous madman who it's okay to murder. Uh yeah, which I think is that controversial. Fine. I feel yeah. like it's like, yeah, oh, we were gonna bust this guy for drugs, but we also found some dead bodies in here, so we'll arrest him for that. Mm-hmm. Like, it's kind of like, yeah, while we're there, we're gonna kill him. Right, right. That, that's what was gonna happen. That's pretty much the only reason why they wanted to go in there because, yeah, he's a piece yeah. of shit, and you can't just like, you can't go in and assassinate somebody without some shit happening. You but know? But don't you guys miss Saddam impressions? Oh yeah, uh, Hot Shots so Part Two. Oh, Come yeah. on, that great. movie. That guy. It was a great person. Interesting story right. about that guy. He was not the guy who did the Saddam Hussein in Hot Shots Part Two, and mm-hmm. also the Saddam in The Big Lebowski. Ah. He was not an actor. He just happened to have a very mm-hmm. strong mm-hmm. resemblance to Saddam Hussein. That's awesome. <laughs> and now he's a millionaire. Um, no, he's yeah, probably, probably I think, thousand. I think maybe. he's retired, but like he, apparently he's like really hard to get because he owned his own business, and running his own business would have cost more to like do quit his job for a few days to do this acting right. work. Wow. So there's an was... Obama guy like that too that lives in the Bronx. Yes. He's Puerto yeah. Rican. Yes. And he does like <laughs> Chinese commercials as Obama and stuff. That's wow. hilarious. That's great. I can't wait until I see the people who have to impersonate me. It's like Dave. <laughs> like you just look like Andy Rocco. We know you're not an actor, but if you could do this Chinese fried chicken commercial, it would be really helpful. Uh, yeah, it is like Dave Mellon. Uh, I guess the question is is like is a rock better today? Is there a better off I today have than no in 2003? idea. Uh, Do they have a better chance in the future? Uh, I mean, I think that they've they've got a better chance. I mean, it. The com- I mean, not the hundred thousand dead ones. Right, the, the ones dead ones are. are <laughs> hey, they're oh. going to remain dead, dead for all eternity. Are pretty dead. Right. Uh, well, who knows? You know. M- with like sorcerers nowadays, they can do a lot of crazy. Did you say sorcerers? Yeah, sorcerers? yeah, like sorcerers. I think you said nowadays. saucers, oh, but genies. you meant sorcerers. Yeah, like genies and sorcerers. Oh, yeah. It's barbaric, but hey, it's home. Yeah, and guys, yeah. let's be honest, that region of the world, famous for its genies <laughs> and oh, jinns. Like it, if it's gonna happen anywhere, it's gonna happen there. Oh yeah. Um yeah. Can't rub a lamp without some dude <laughs> popping out. <laughs> Which and we're always always trying to rub on lamps. It yeah. never pays off. Uh quick question. This is a, an advanced fact check request, and I don't yes, think you're gonna be able to find it. I what was it. the rate of civilian casualty uh for like five years going before the Iraq war of Iraqi civilian I versus see what you're after? Okay. Like was Saddam Hussein well, murdering more innocent people let's, than our let's take silly bet. little war? Let's take a dollar bet right now. I say it was four a day. <laughs> I don't know I if think, I'll be able to find the rate. I bet I'll be able to find the total number. Yeah, but the total from what, you know, from when to when. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I gotcha. Right. Uh, and this, again, tall order. And I know you're not the usual fact checker. No, right. I apologize yeah. to dump all this on you. Right. So last minute, but. that's This is a real test. <laughs> but I mean, it's like, how many people disappear in China all the time, you know? Like. A lot, really, and that's... we're not doing much. About well, I that. mean, listen, there's so much. That's the thing about war, especially in America, is there's always ulterior motives, right? It, it, we we yeah. sell it to the people yeah. as one thing, but there's reasons. So China, we're not fucking with China. We 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 need them to make stuff so we could buy it, and yeah. they need us to buy we their stuff. We can't fuck with them. They can't fuck with exactly. us. Exactly, it's a like, complete right. standstill. If anybody's ever worried, maybe China's gonna take us. So it's like, no, there would be an economic. 
collapse. Who every country, doodads? every country in the world, if like um like America's in such a good place that it's like if anybody attacked us, it'd be like. Oh, you can't you can't fuck with them. They right. they they're like so pitiful to the existence of humanity. We won't know what blue jeans to wear without yes. America. This or, is uh, from the Wikipedia article on Saddam Hussein's uh, human rights violations, and it says, according to the New York Times, Saddam murdered as many as a million of his people with poison gas. He tortured, maimed, and imprisoned countless more. That's mm. not, you can't know how right. many that is. It's countless. Yeah. Um, I mean, so infinite? His, so it was, his so it was good His unprovoked invasion of Iran is estimated to have left another million people dead. Yowza. Yeah. The man was a menace and he needed yeah, to be stopped. I, feel like I don't know if we need to throw a whole war about cool it. J. Joe to Jameson. He's not <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> I, I feel no, but I do but, agree. But, I yeah, feel taking like, out Saddam though seems different than invading Iraq. They don't have yeah. to be the same thing. No, I'm just saying yeah. history might wink on this war as a little bit less shitty than we think from us living through it because we know it was on unfounded and we know kind of that it didn't do much but other also, than kill for, people. Forty five hundred American soldiers died. Which and sucks. that didn't need to happen really at all. Yeah, for, I guess for so. Saddam to die. Yeah. I we I, could because like not many died in the bin Ladens. Assassination. <laughs> Listen, no one is more pro black ops military strikes than I am. I love them. I think they're great. Yeah. I would have preferred we did it that way, but I'm just saying, in a hundred years from now, you, when no one cares about a million dead civilians, we're going to be like, you, good thing we killed Saddam that time. You also have expressed on the show that you m- would like to kill somebody one day eventually. Yes, so, I would. Uh, wow. <laughs> really? <laughs> Guilty. Guilty. I thought wow. it was funny that uh, he had Mars bars with him when they found him in that bunker. Obama, uh, uh, Obama? Obama? No, they have never found him. <laughs> they He's still on the can't list. Can't find Obama. He's still on the list. Him. No, Saddam. When they like I, unearthed him, he had like Mars bars, which I found funny. Baby's those got a sweet ne- tooth. Because those aren't popular in America, and they seem popular everywhere else. I think in the world. it would be so funny if like the whole thing where people this conspiracy theories that Obama is actually some kind of like sleeper cell or like undercover terrorist or something. If that was like actually true, but there even be if he th- if he was. He can't even get the things past that a lot of people want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's but, like, my, but my favorite thing is just like the idea that one day he reveals it and he's like, I don't know why you didn't see it coming. My name's Obama. It sounds <laughs> so much like Osama. What is wrong with you people? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, but what's the next news article, Kaylin? We've got South Korea network attack a computer mm-hmm. virus. Or mm. hacking action. Mm. Unclear. Uh, South Korean banks and news organizations' networks suddenly shut down on Wednesday afternoon. Mm. Jeez, that puts a monkey wrench into their business. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so They're wondering uh, if that it could be a virus implanted by North Korean hackers. I hmm. mean, it's probably North Korea. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they aren't great hackers, though, up there. Yeah, they're they mostly, <laughs> like, eat dirt and stuff. Well, that's, that's like, the average civilians and stuff. But, like, they right. do, they send people to, like, American schools or, like, foreign schools so that they learn more. Like, all of uh, Kim Jong-il's kids went and studied abroad under fake right, names. Right, right. Like, does, does this mean that like Kim Jong Il's like was tagged in a lot of Nike sneaker ads or something? Or like what happened exactly though is the question. Like it just was attacked. Yeah, well, like they, shut down. Yeah, they wouldn't work. Oh, and in fact, down. it said uh, there were skulls on the screens, which I really like <laughs> as a, a sort of 1990s hacker movie. Yeah, like trope. hackers. <laughs> yeah, like, like Johnny, it, was it was Johnny Lee Miller the whole time. <laughs> it was zero cool. Well, yeah, I guess zero cool. cool. Whenever yeah, these guys then, were trained on foreign ground, like skulls were synonymous with hacking. So they're only just doing what they were taught. It was probably, f- they probably watched the movie Hackers a lot. And mm-hmm. it's most likely Matthew Lillard. <laughs> well, they do have. Uh, or serial killer. It's always North Matthew Korea Lillard. North Korea supposedly has uh, kidnapped some Japanese movie stars. Some Maybe they kidnapped Matthew Lillard. <laughs> they saw Scream. They kidnapped and Japanese like, movie stars? Th- that's unverified by me, the fact checker, but I've heard this before. <laughs> This is just Caitlin, the rumor spreader, right. talking. <laughs> Take off my fact checker hat. But, yeah, because um, he, yeah. he's obsessed with Moot. Well, Kim Jong Il, yeah. rest in peace. <laughs> we'll grieve you till we meet you. Um, he's he was obsessed with film. Yeah, right. Yeah, I've heard that too. That he would kidnap directors also to make movies. Like he would kidnap right. people to create for him his own How private. Scary films. is it to be South Korean, like right next to that North Korea? Mm. Ooh. Yeah, I don't they're know. like a first world nation, just chilling next to. This crazy dictatorship where people are starving to death. <laughs> where people love basketball and hack with skulls. We're like just they next to, to Canada and it's kind of... Oh, there it is. I'm terrified. That's iffy. Yeah. <laughs> Canada's a great neighbor. 
They do nothing wrong. Those guys are great. They <laughs> only just make and give all these horrible ideas to us without free health care. Like, yeah, yeah, look it. at this. It works. And uh, we're like, Err. They sometimes make great sketch comedy. They, they give us yeah. all their hilarious people. Mm-hmm. Yes, that is true. And we just be laughing. We, take, we poach them. We poach their hilarious we poach people. Them. We steal them. We go yeah. to Canada yeah, exactly. to kidnap the sketch comedians. <laughs> guys, what if we we're like Moranis. North Korea? Yeah, true. Um, what else is else uh, up in the see. news? Montana Kayla? lawmakers vote to allow salvage of roadkill. So now in Montana, if you kill a large game with your car, <laughs> you can eat it or you can call a food bank. That's <laughs> nice. There's something poetic about in a land where so much atrocity was committed against the Native Americans, we are now following their philosophies of using all parts of the yeah. mm-hmm. That we is hit Ma- with our Buick. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Wait, is Montana, was that the place that uh, legalized weed too? Or is that Denver? That's Colorado. 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 Well, or is that the state of Denver? <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> the state of Denver. Uh, that's crazy. I wish... Uh, it makes I, sense. Why not? I guess so. I mean... I think it's better to eat an animal that was hit by a car yeah. than one that you just find dead because it could have died of some but disease. I kind of, yeah. for a long time, I, I, I didn't understand this, but like I heard you're not supposed to eat like an animal that was... Well, I guess not, something that died of natural causes you shouldn't eat. Right. 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 But uh, I guess killed by a car, I guess, is no different. It's than just a, like hunting. It's yeah. the same thing yeah. as hunting. Yeah. The Dalai Lama is allowed to eat meat that... Had died naturally. Did you guys know that? Really? Oh. Yeah. Why? People were like this, this, like cow didn't die of any disease or anything. It died naturally, um, like of old age or something. And then they'll give the Dalai Lama meat, and he can eat it. That's weird. He's like, oh, I've been waiting all week. Yeah. For my roadkill. Oh, it wouldn't be roadkill. It'd be just a tired old animal. I've yeah. been waiting for my geriatric cow to die, and now that it's dead, I can have some ribs. That means the Dalai Lama has never tried veal. Yeah. There are opponents to the bill, though, including Democratic <laughs> Senator Kendall Van Dyke. Are highway patrolmen and law enforcement experts in meat inspection, he asked? <laughs> I've not seen anything in the bill that indicates to me that the safety parameters are in place to let me know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is a safe food source for those in need, or anyone else for that matter. Mm. The man has a great point. But yeah. I sort of, he's right, but like... I mean, like, obviously don't do this, but it should be legal, is yeah, what I think. Yeah. Like, yeah. But don't ever do it. I mean, it was, <laughs> to be fair, this bill was proposed by Toothless Joe, who lives up on the mountain. <laughs> Dad, damn it, I told you it would be a great idea. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I met Senator Toothless Joe. Oh, okay. Montana. I got to go. Independent. Registered this is independent. good for when the government takes all our guns away, we'll still have a way to hunt. Right. I exactly. Feel like, I feel like that might really solve, put a bandit on this nation right now. I feel like, guys... You could still kill animals with your cars and eat them, and they're like, oh. What okay. if you kill, like, you know, our what, travel weapons? What if yeah. you kill a person with uh, your car? Can you? You get eat, to eat them. You, you get to eat them. <laughs> that would have made that. I know what you did last summer. A better story if they ate him. Nothing could make that. No, a that would make. Story. <laughs> wait, but that would that would make it that would make it not a better story because then he would be completely devoured and he'd yeah. be dead, and then no one would ever come back and kill them. That would have been like what. 20 minutes to just them. You'd have to see them slow cook it. It'd be really right. boring. It'd be a terrible movie. Right. And then you know what's all funny about that movie is grace. Jennifer Love Hewitt is the lead, and then Sarah Michelle Gellar plays like her dumb friend. <laughs> no. Like just no. someone playing Jennifer Love Hewitt's dumb friend. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like Sarah Michelle Gellar must have been thinking, like, why aren't we switching roles? Like, why am I playing the dumb friend? I'm Buffy. I'm Buffy, <laughs> and I am dating Freddie Prince Jr. Married uh, to. They're married? Would a dumb person be dating Freddie Prince Jr.? I don't think so. Yeah, given the prince's uh, track record, I would be kind of surprised if this one wasn't around very long. You know Mm. what I mean? Mm. I think he's probably outlived his dad. (laughs) Well, he certainly has. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But also, guys, quick fun fact about him. Mm. He writes for World Wrestling Entertainment. He's a wrestling writer now. Is Freddie Prince Jr.? Seriously? Or he was for like at least two or three of the last five years. That's amazing that's, yeah. awesome. that's true i can't yeah, believe I'm totally that fact check that caitlin i find that amazing because i i'm happy because it prevents him from making another sequel to down to you uh, i love one? down to you <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, wait was there ever a sequel no no but I would think, I think uh, Andy kidnapped a, a Japanese director and made yeah. him make one. <laughs> I think if there was a sequel to Down to You, it would be another. It would just be another couple. I feel, and it would be like a straight to video or cable movie. Right. That, that was would, Julia Stiles, right? I think so. Yes. Mm. Uh, and he drank that shampoo. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we just reminiscing yeah, about was Down Julia to Stiles. You. Yeah, we just having well, a good old reminisce. I was getting it mixed up with Melissa Joan Hart mm. and uh, Adrian Grenier and uh, crazy, crazy for you. Drive me crazy. Drive me crazy. Let's let's get our. 
it, uh, 90s teen rom-coms. Straight. Uh, Prince is, uh, was a... Yes, he worked until t- 2009 for WWE. Wow. He created... Wait, what does he do? What did he create? <laughs> did he create some wrestlers that I might know? He created Erwin R. Schweister <laughs> the second. No? Okay. I don't. I can't really tell That's what right. he did. He That's just seemed okay. to like it so much <laughs> that they paid him. Cool. Uh, he wrote for the blog. Nice. Uh. Uh, he was hired as a member of the creative staff to contribute weekly television and pay-per-view programs. That's funny. For the SmackDown brand. All right. That's, that's, that's one of their top brands. Sadly, on February 22nd, 2009, Friends and WWE parted ways. Did you have something to say, Alan? Oh, I was going to say that the, all of the writers for that show, it's all like non-union. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Vince McMahon's insane to work for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. They're yeah. just on steroids and cocaine. Like, if you worked in a company where all the guys you wrote for... And all your bosses were on steroids and cocaine all the time. It'd be very. And as a writer, you're a little bit more cerebral, you know, and you just have to hang out with all these people. It's very frightening. And yeah. that is a, an official fact right on our show. <laughs> We'd like to note that uh, came from the the truth of the uh, swarthy gentleman. Guys, everyone Jason in the media Shabir. is friends. All the, the entire media <laughs> hangs out at big media picnics. And, yes, yep. Jews. I wish there was a sound bite that played every time I walked into any room, maybe with like a harp, a little harp behind it. Uh, Caitlin, we have any other new news for uh, the- um, President Barack Obama visited Israel and was heckled, but he shut it down. Yeah, he shut it down. He had one outburst, like one person. Like, you know, eh. you know what the funny thing is? Like when I first heard this, I was like, "Oh my god, this must be like the first time." But this happens oh, a lot. Oh yeah, yeah he, he gets heckled that. all the time. Oh no, George Bush did too. Like at thing, like a lot of the presidents have been heckled. I'd say hundred percent. Yeah, uh, I feel like all of us have gotten in front of a room of people and talked before. Doesn't anyone who ever does that get heckled? That's, <laughs> that's just how true. that goes. Um, but there, the one, the one that's more interesting before this, there was one where he was giving a speech and somebody in the front row, very clear as day, called Shouted him liar. Right? Uh, oh, so also, that was in the there was State of the Union. Yeah, there was yeah. one where somebody uh, called him the Antichrist. Oh. What? Uh, yeah, he would like literally was just screaming. He's like, "You are the Antichrist. You do not believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus." Jesus is the only Christ, and so on and so forth. Did that man get removed from the he front room? He got removed, and then there was just like a point where Obama was just like, uh, is that his jacket? Just be sure he gets his jacket. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> Taking the high road. Yeah, nice. He That's was, my president. Yeah, and he, I loved his retort to this, which was like, you couldn't hear what the guy said, but like Obama essentially is just like, hey, just feels like home. <laughs> like, I, like, I get heckled here, I get heckled everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's all cool with me, man. Um, I wish just the president could just do my retort, which is, shut the fuck up. That would not be very presidential. Oh, my God. Go if he just well. did that, goes, shut, fuck you. <laughs> just have a president. <laughs> I think Bush could have gotten away with it. He maybe. would have. The, or- I don't think, I, I think it's weird. People don't get away with that, even though, no one cares. Like, you know what I mean? Like, people yeah. say the F word and no one cares, but for some reason we make up that we care when it's the president. <laughs> yeah. like, the I'm kids. outraged. Yeah. It's the same with, like, this has been like 20 years now, but when Clinton smoked pot, it's like, I, what? And then our next, <laughs> wait, our next president was addicted to cocaine. Yeah, it's fine. We don't care anymore. <laughs> we had to pretend we cared one time. He was a drunk, he was a drunk driver and was addicted to cocaine. Yeah. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Whatever. <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's okay. We okay, we it. acted like we cared once. Yeah, we we all drive drove drunk before. That, that's right. what I think. It, it it has to be just like Obama go fuck fuck you, and then for all the future presidents, <laughs> it's fine. Like he's in his last. Yeah, but he doesn't know. Term. He could find out that it's like I don't know some important Israeli, <laughs> <laughs> like was having a Tourette's day or something. And he told, right. He that that would be off. when saying fuck you to the audience goes wrong. But I think, you know, if he has his, all the best intentions, I think it's okay to try. I think if somebody's calling you the Antichrist, like in that situation, go, what is your, what's your problem? Yeah. Get out of here. Can we hug? <laughs> Just hug every heckler. Mm-hmm. That, uh-huh. would, that would make them leave. I heard something <laughs> a long time ago from a friend of mine, Brian Finkelstein, who mm-hmm. told me something else. Juice. For, juice. <laughs> uh, that he said that uh, whenever you feel like you want to punch somebody, you should actually try hugging them. And then like the same amount of energy is like spent. I think it's probably a good idea. Yeah. You mean to crush them? I do think it <laughs> no, will no, make, not, them, it will make them uncomfortable as well. Yeah. And they'll just leave. Yeah, you and you will have won. This guy sounds like a real hippie. Yeah, he was a, he was really I like smart. It, though. He was a smart guy, though, and I, I believe him. Uh, but he, I don't. Do know you want what, to know what that would do to the sport of boxing? 
<laughs> it's become a fucking problem. There is hugging in boxing. Yeah, they do kind of hold they, on to each other when yeah, they get exhausted. It's a clinch, and then it gets broken up. Most of pro- MMA is just them hugging for a while. Say, <laughs> I wouldn't say most. My uh, understanding of that sport is very what deep. Is I don't want to bog down this podcast. Um, what is it? Uh, what do you mm-hmm. call it? Martial arts. Martial arts. Oh, okay. It's, there's a lot of grappling in there. Famously, yeah. the famous brand is the UFC is the big. Some right. people use those two words interchangeably. Right. But they are not. But they're not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm trying to fact check why why did Obama go to Israel or just just to vacay? Just to, <laughs> I think they're just addressing the Palestinian just to, just issue. As, just just checking in on that, yeah. seeing how bad that's going. I, it's think. a big it's a big issue. I no, came to yeah, address yeah. the Palestinian issue, and it's still very much an issue. I think it was an appeal to young people of both nations. Yeah, yeah, or, and just hey, we're on the precipice of something here, guys. Let's be friends. Just have the have a Buddhist become the president of both. Israel. <laughs> I mean, uh, that would never work. Palestine. What's wrong with that plan? Nothing. Um, just be like, Nothing. I have no bias here. Yeah. You know, Richard Gere is a Buddhist. Yes, Absolutely. They do. So, yeah. p- by the Starzinski solution, that just means you just throw a couple Richard Gears in there and we're fine. I'd well, say when has that failed, all- Jason? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it did really great for Chicago. Speaking mm-hmm. of which, I think at the end of the show, we need to have the Star- Starzinski solution. That should be the, well, <laughs> the final Starzinski it's like, solution. Uh, it's like uh, the word, the Colbert word yep. would be the yeah, st- I like Starzinski it. solution. Yeah, I like it. It's always going to be Richard Gere. Yep. <laughs> I know how to solve this problem. Or just hey man, just have both. Like nice. just have both, man. That's it. Can't decide between potato salad and fries. Have both. Both, man. Um, Caitlin, what is uh, the next thing? We uh, got North Dakota, another state of the North. Personhood measure passes state house. So this is uh, will be on the November 2014 ballot for you North Dakotans. Listen, uh, <laughs> if passes, will amend North Dakota's constitution to state that the inalienable right to life of every human being at any stage of development must be recognized and protected. Oh, uh, shut the fuck up the about this. The amendment would ban abortion in the People. state without without exceptions for rape, incest, or life of the mama. It could affect the legality of some forms of birth control, stem cell research, and in vitro fertilization. This uh, probably won't get passed, I don't think. At least I Dakota, hope. It'll, it'll be state, on the ballot. I think it will. I think it will. Also, don't worry, guys. There's not much like uh, stem cell research going on in North Dakota. I know. <laughs> Is it like, ugh. The universities yeah. shut down your Damn stem cell it. research. All that uh. progress we were making, and Christopher Reeve's relatives are just crying. Yeah, Michael Pro- J. Fox pulls out his money. Yeah. From <laughs> That's it. I, I'm State. done with you, Dakotans. I feel Bullets. like we can all like recognize nobody is pro-abortion. Nobody's like, I love this thing. Every nah, it's I, like I don't, know. I don't really care. I think. Uh, <laughs> I think. No one. Yeah. No. Wait, nobody's pro. Uh, well, uh, what I'm trying to say is nobody's pro-abortion. Pro-choice is a completely different sure. thing. You right. know? It's like... They are, but more people should get abortions, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if for no other reason than just to get used to it, you know, so when you need one for realsies, you're right. so freaked out. Though, right. I don't know. I think we've let the pro-life movement really dictate how we talk about this. Mm-hmm. And we've let them make us feel weird about abortions when... I think it's okay for someone to believe that that's not a life and to get an abortion and not feel bad about it. And I yeah. don't, th- I legitimately think we should not pass judgment on anyone not feeling bad about having an abortion. Like, right, right. We, we even, I'm assuming you guys are pro choice and I don't know, but I feel like the pro choice side feels so bad about being pro choice. Yeah. It's, I, I think that the pro life movement has really won that war on how we talk about it. My official stance on this, and I've discussed abortion on the show before, which is I've I've had one. Uh, not I, <laughs> Did I, it tickle? Well, it did. Uh, it was weird because I was also the first pregnant man. And no, I Arnold also, you, you, Arnie Schwarzenegger was. I should have kept it just, for, kept it just for, science. For, the, for science purposes. But like, I don't recommend that you go through it. But at the same time, I also just tell people just to have safe sex. Right. Well, I, yeah. I don't recommend <laughs> yes. people doing it as a measure of uh, a measure of uh, of like safe sex or just like a a, me- a measure of birth control. I mean. No, but, but I don't think I, that's a huge thing. Like but, again, I think that's like something the pro life movement has put out there that there are these women that are like just never doing using it all birth the time. and constantly uh, doing that. I think yeah. there's a, certainly been some women who happen to get pregnant and be like, "Well, I'm just going to abort this because I just don't want a baby." I think that's fine. Though. It's fine. Right. I guess. I mean, abortions are always a first 
trimester, right? You can't do them in the second or third. I no, you can. I think it you can depend, do it. It depends on what state. Yeah, but is you, it third trimester? No, you can. No. Yeah, it's right. Because like, I don't no, know no. at what point the life starts, but I feel like third trimester would be like. Kind of, first of all, listen, probably babies aren't even really people until they're like two. I'm yeah. gonna jack that up to like seven. Seventeen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm with Caitlin on seventeen. I don't think any. They're they're. Twelve year old never had a good idea. Yeah, not a once. I have not, I have not had a really great conversation with any twelve-year-old. You've never seen the show Smart Guy <laughs> or Baby Geniuses. Okay, I think a actually I have to blame Baby <laughs> Geniuses. I think this is, I think that put a lot of stupid ideas in people's heads that babies are like geniuses up to a certain age, and then yep. that's a very pro. That's, that's, a very, w- that's, that's a, why the religious right is so pissed off about this. Yeah. That's but pretty. but even so, people don't like going to the doctors, you know? <laughs> right. Nobody right. wants to like, Ugh, I got to go I got to go to the doctors. I, I, it's frustrating for me and I'm not getting it ever getting an abortion because I can't. Um, <laughs> you can. Alan, believe in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, yeah, but I think it's. It, I mean, it is fun. I think it will pass. I mean, if I think it's left really? up to voters. It's North Dakota. I mean, it's a very conservative state, and all yeah. they have to do is vote yes. What's it's not South, like they have to do what's anything. South Dakota like? Is they, that they'll just it's go a, very it's conservative? A, it's a liberals' paradise. <laughs> yeah. It's a den of iniquity. Everyone's just drugging <laughs> just and whoring, hippies. smoking reefer. They're and... down the south. They got a yeah. cooler climate. <laughs> I would say if there's any young uh, girls who don't want to be a mother, and North Dakota is not letting you do this. Go to South Dakota. Take that. It's still like a four-hour <laughs> I mean, drive. Women's <laughs> rights advice from Andy Rocco. Yeah. But yeah, uh, it is pretty weird to have that in your state yeah. constitution. That yeah. Is. I feel it's like Roe versus Wade passed. Just let it drop. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, that's a whole state's rights. I don't know. I think also issue. the important thing is that uh, I feel like the only people that are holding on to this are really old and they're just going to die soon. That's not actually true. Young people are really... Uh, really? It is one of the few things that younger people are more conservative on yeah. than older people. Well, the whole, you know... It is uh, abortion. The, you know, you're, you're ending a life that doesn't have the ability to speak for itself thing is very... Well, not funny to me, but it's funny when put in the context of <laughs> they, don't, they still won't allow for abortions in the t- uh, cases where the mother's life is in danger. Mm-hmm. It's still like, well, you can't abort it. She's just going to have to die, and the baby too, probably. But <laughs> no way are we killing that baby to save an already existing life. Then yeah. it gets really weird. That's yeah. weird. Yeah. But that is an argument. I don't know. That's a terrible argument. I mean, even Mitt Romney was for abortions in cases of the, like... Is that true? Ra- he well, initially he was, was, but then he, ju- he just was and a liar. And then he changed. Uh, um, uh, guys, an asshole. they're all liars. Guys, yeah. he didn't win. He's fine. Yeah, that's yeah. what's the most important. What does he do now? Uh, uh, just, just sits on piles of money. Right. Yeah. Fun. Uh, he just eats, he just eats money <laughs> Way and better fires gig. people. <laughs> Way better gig. He's working in a, a new baseball equipment field. Yeah, he's a he's the custodian. Yeah, he's he no he's he's manufacturing his own baseball stuff. He is someone Mit- that would always have to work. It's uh he's he's doing mitts don't, mitts don't. mitts Ew. Mit- mitts. Gross. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Let's move on to the next thing. The uh, next thing is Mitts Mitts. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, just yes. when the IPO is over, it's a billion-dollar company. Breaking news. Uh, Mitt Romney has new Mitt company. Does not make bats or bowls. Do they make mittens? Uh, they are coming out with mittens in 2015. They're going to work on What about the hand warmers for women that uh, meet in the middle? He doesn't believe in those. Okay. Those lead to abortion. <laughs> he, he doesn't believe in muffs let's see uh, what else do we got well on the lighter side guys <laughs> i wouldn't say that this was lighter but <laughs> uh the Mad Men producers had to tell john ham to start wearing underwear yes because of the show's transition into the 60s clothes are tighter and his junk is showing right and he's got a massive dick. Yeah. I mean, we all assume. We don't even have to be told that. We're just like yeah. are pretty sure. Oh, you guys didn't need to even assume there was a John Ham like dick uh, thing that happened uh, this year or last year. <laughs> what, excuse me. There yeah, was the like dick thing, you know, you know the like, party uh, where... like TMZ and fucking Egotastic and all the sites that show pictures of celebrities' nipples and stuff. They had like a lot of John Ham bold oh, shit. Oh, I happening. see it. Actually, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've already you can seen like, the... see it in his pants guys, in the regular. Where have you been? I've already seen Is the outline not... of John Ham's penis. Like, I Six so, months ago. Is now. he necessarily huge, or maybe he's just a, a shower, though? Boy, he's got a fucking big old set. If you're a shower, you're also a grower, Andy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
<laughs> That's yeah. fact. You're not going to front on that. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's going to get smaller. No, no it, it no doesn't. It shrinks when they get an erection. Yeah. Uh, but I like that John Hamm has a huge dick because it's like. I know you like. If that. anyone doesn't need to have a huge dick, yeah. it's That's John Hamm. It's That's, true. But I, he does, and it's great. No, I. he can just have a regular. I was, I'm happy about I it. I was really. You were happy. I'm for, pumped. You're excited for him. I am you wanna showing pump, and a growing. You right wanna. Now. You wanna pump his penis. No, I just listen. When you're when a man is so close to a fucking a perfect work of art of a human being, <laughs> why not just make it a whole fucking full why not a full go set? For it? You I know, gotcha. he's got like. Uh, but he like he does have a flaw. He's got like that skin disease. What? what? He what has skin? a skin disease. You know, like uh, where vitiligo? there would be like the white Michael blotches. Thing? Vitiligo. Yeah, he's got vitiligo. But he's already white. Yeah, but it's like uh, white people can get it where it's just kind of looks like it's bleached. It's right, mainly right. on his uh, hands. Right. Um, so you don't see it. That's fine. Because, yeah. I mean, listen. No one's perfect. I know. Before I was talking I a big game about how perfect John Ham is because he's a huge dick. Now you say no one's perfect. Well, I mean, I was saying. <laughs> What's the truth? <laughs> All right. Fact check. Fact check yeah. it. I'm just saying he's he's pretty good. Yeah, he's great. He's he's pretty close to the total pack. Yo, he's yeah, like a, he's a nine plus. Oh yeah, I can see. I'm it gonna. In his hands. He might even be a, a ten. It's like barely there, yeah, I, but it's like that's notice. the flaw. That's right. the chip in the marble. But you what? know what? You don't need to be perfect. It's sometimes it's our our flaws that make us who we are and make us so interesting, and that oh makes God. you appreciate. And if so, the other's I huge have, dick right. and his great hair. If so, I'm amazing then because I am nothing but flaws. Well, you need a few flaws to then <laughs> accentuate all the other positive stuff. Let me ask a quick thing: Is it like does the Madman show? Uh, the Men Man. The, the Madman show. <laughs> show. Are you my grandpa? <laughs> yeah, the Madman show. What is it? What, is that show doing well still? Like, is the ratings uh, for? I feel like this is also a kind of a ratings grab thing for people to be like, "Oh, come see uh, Mad Men, where you can see maybe." Uh, I think it does well. I'm not. I, I can think look it's it up. critically acclaimed. Although I heard the what, maybe the last season got like no uh, Emmy nods or something like that, which was strange for Mad Men. And now it will per penis. Hey. For best penis. Best penis. <laughs> best supporting penis. Um, it's best cock. Guys. <laughs> right. Let's be That's professional. Mm, it uh, says that its season five finale drew 2.7 million viewers, which was its best. That's pretty okay. enormous. That's, right, a, so that's an enormous that's big big for AMC share, yeah. in particular. But now I have a reason to watch the season's right. bold. Well, actually, yeah. you don't because they were saying that they. The they story wanna, is yeah. that they're going to obscure his impressive anatomy. Yeah. They have to yeah. quell that monster dick. <laughs> Uh, oh, that, that's got to be a weird, jo- weird thing in your job. If somebody is just like your job, your penis is taking away from your job. That's crazy. No, but it, the story is that because the pants got tighter in the '60s. That's no, why. I know, but still, I mean, they they had to tell him. Well, no, that's it, wardrobe wasn't department. Wasn't one that's part scene of the... already in the '60s, or I think so. Uh, just uh, later '60s, different styles. Okay, never mind. Anyway. I want to say that I don't watch the show. I've never seen an episode. I just know that John Hamm is. I have also a good-looking never man. seen an episode. I've seen a few. I've never really watched it all the way through, but I, I'm always happy to know that Rich Summer is working and uh, <laughs> doing a really good job on the show. <laughs> UCB alum, Rich Summer. Mm-hmm. We yep. salute you. We salute so you. So many UCB people getting hired on the Mad Men. Elaine Carroll was in an episode. Oh, nice. I didn't That's know that. That's right. Mm-hmm. Oh, Somebody great. else too. was. Okay. Um, One of my friends is a writer's assistant Dominic. on it. Dirkus was in it. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, he was. Are you yeah. fucking kidding me? Yeah. Oh, wow. And uh, Dynamo did a lot of work for it, too. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. so I, I guess Kristen I was Shaw kidding, was like but no, I'm episode. not. Yeah, Kristen Shaw was as well. Um, all right. Kristen Shaw. AMC's Mad Men. Right. Sponsored by Mitz Mitz. Uh, it's not. It's not sponsored by Mitz Mitz. <laughs> Mitz Mitz. Mitz Mitz. You'd when you need a mitt called Mitt. <laughs> Mitz Mitz. <laughs> Get it up. Uh, Get it. Caitlin is having that. a stroke, and she can only say Mitt. Get it. <laughs> I would love it. I would really love Mitt Romney if he made that product and did the commercials himself, and then said "Get it" at the end. Get it. Are Not you your at- president, but now I'm on your TV. <laughs> <laughs> he speaks like a southern idiot for no reason. Uh, is there any other news that we have going on, Caitlin? There is. Mm. Did you guys hear about this no, please. Uh, oh. senator that was found in another like uh, local off- official's house dead, just shot in the head? Happened like really, broke, like last night or this morning or no. something. Really? But yeah, mm, looking it up. That sounds like news. Mm, that sounds like yeah. this sounds like a John Grisham novel. Wait, is this a, yeah, US, to... a U.S. senator or 
a state senator. Um, I believe it was a state senator. That's oh. crazy. He was Whatever. just shot in. She. She <gasps> was shot Whoa. in. Yep. Oh my God! It's that whole thing where the uh, the father got taken away, and then the other person, and then the doctor says, "I can't operate on this boy. It's my son." Type of thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just like that. It's, it's the, just like that. Mississippi you know, lawmaker found dead in home of former colleague. colleague. Yeah. Ooh. Mississippi state legislator was found dead of an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound oh. on Sunday. Apparent self-inflicted. No such thing. But no one seems to know the reason Jessica Upshaw, a 53-year-old Republican representative, allegedly took her own life, or why her body was found in the home of former state representative Clint Rottenberry. Rottenberry? <laughs> well, he's clearly the villain. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. He is bit, He yeah. is under close watch and is not allowed anywhere near his cape or thin mustache. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so hold oh. on, hold on a second. Could this be some life of David Gale shit? Like they were colleagues, but were they friends oh, yeah. or enemies? Oh, like maybe yeah. she's like, I'm oh, gonna kill myself. Lovers. Ooh. Um, right. And she's like, if I'm going out, I'm doing it in this fucking guy's house, so he goes down for it. Ooh. It's the mm. ultimate. It's how you win at life. Oh I, my god. Oh, no. According to WJTV, Upshaw is the third state legislator legislator to die this session. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mississippi, get in it Mississippi? together. <laughs> Wow. The well, third, keep running expl- through. <laughs> that was Guys, a, running Mississippi is not a fun job. There was that weird, uh, on the last show, we did that uh, story about the, the the town that had, like, no sheriff for, like, a long time because, yeah. and I think that was in Mississippi, too, and it's just. Because why? Did they think it was cursed or something? <laughs> Ooh, I like how gossipy this last sentence is. Roddenberry was defeated in the 2007 primaries by J. Andrew Gibson, who has represented the 77th district since then. He'd been a state representative since 1992. He is married, but the Clarion Ledger notes that his wife is listed at a separate number. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Southern wow. gossip. <laughs> uh, this a sounds separate. like yeah. everybody who was writing this were sitting around drinking mint juice. Yeah, <laughs> a separate number. <laughs> you guys know oh, that there's cell phones, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. Oh, wow. I have a separate. Well, I have a separate phone number from Lisa. That's. Oh. 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 Where, where is Lisa? Where? This yeah. one? Where, where did you Trouble think she was? Trouble in Lisa? paradise. <laughs> no, we both have cell phones. What All is this? Right. Hmm. Well, uh, that is a new story. That is really interesting. Wow. Thank you, Alan, for bringing it up. You're we'll, welcome. We'll give you a contributing writer credit. And we will credit. keep you Sweet. <laughs> listeners abreast of any developments in the death of Jessica Upshaw. 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 Rottenberry. Upshaw. I love Upshaw the names down there. Upshaw, you yeah, poop hole. Clint Rottenberry yep. definitely wins. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, Caitlin, do you have another news we source? We have another news source. Caitlin, could you top that? No, yeah. Uh, absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> I wish we had a sound clip for the song Top, top That. From, top That. From Top, top that. that. Top and That. Then, okay, we kind of do. We don't need a sound um, clip. <laughs> uh, Politico reports that a Massachusetts sheriff defends his joke about uh, Obama <laughs> being assassinated. Republican sheriff in Massachusetts is defending a joke he told at St. Patrick's Day breakfast in which (laughs) Abraham Lincoln visits President Barack Obama in a dream and suggests he go to the theater. Oh, wow. This is exactly like when I tried to defend uh, a joke to my math teacher that I thought someone was going to snap her bra (laughs) in the seventh grade. Uh Uh-huh. Was it wasn't a battle I should have ever fought. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not a good joke. That's it's, my problem with it. It's not other, funny. Well, I mean, it's right. a, it implies that President Lincoln hates President Obama. Well, that's <laughs> part of it, and that yeah, he wants him to die. <laughs> Uh, or maybe he likes him and he wants, wants to, to party with him in heaven and talk about the theater. Maybe the joke is that Abraham Lincoln loves the theater. I give this guy a pass, though, because it was at a St. Patrick's Day breakfast. Right. Like, he's probably already loaded. You know, <laughs> just some bad ideas coming yeah. out. Right. In Massachusetts? I, I mean, oh, yeah. get the fuck out of oh, here. Yeah. And but, maybe maybe I shouldn't even brought up the joke to my math teacher. About oh, right. the was that, oh, was that St. Are Patrick's you... Day as well? You guys were no. loaded? No. Uh, I would like to also note, that in case some of our listeners do not know, but I don't know why you wouldn't, that it is a, it's a felony to uh, say this. You, to make any kind of, even in a joking manner, right. it, is a, it is against the law to threaten the president but in any not, kind of way. But I don't think this constitutes that. Yeah, that is not, not this sure. crime. He is saying, hey guys, you want to hear a joke? Abraham Lincoln visited President Obama in a dream. He said, "Visit the theater." That's not. He's not uh, even threatening the life of the president. He's just. Yeah, making a joke. I feel like that. That's kind of in. No, it's not. It's not board. a threat. It's not the I same. If he threat. said, "I am going to do that," right, it's implying that 
the mm. ghost or of a former president to wants say, him to. <laughs> I'm going to suggest to him he goes to a theater. Right. It's, it's still a joke, but like slightly more theater. Maybe closer. Or if he said someone should. Right. I feel like the all. I mean, it's in bad taste. I, I feel like uh, in the movie In Line of the in, in, in the Line of Fire with John Malkovich, <laughs> I heard that he had to go through like an extensive background search after he did the movie. Really? Yeah. Because it's uh, it's just I I heard the. Why do we care so much? The sheriff just says it was no it. different than Democrats joking about former President George W. Bush going hunting with former Vice President Dick Cheney, who accidentally wounded a hunting partner in 2006. I right. agree. Uh, yeah, 100%. that's true. Yeah. yeah. Though the funnier part about that is that the current Vice President shot someone. <laughs> right. That's what's also being made fun Listen, of. Listen, Joe Biden one. has shot someone probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But. But with a dark gun for fun. With a dark gun for fun. <laughs> Paintballing <never> <laughs> with Biden. Um, yeah, it's like it doesn't, it's just like, yeah, I don't think anything bad, you know, I don't think he should be arrested or anything, but it's just like, get, be, be funnier. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, listen, this man, Take right, some that's improv classes. Yeah, yeah, take that's some improv. Fair. Go to Improv Asylum in Boston, sign up. <laughs> this man is a sheriff I, in Massachusetts. I, it's not his job to be funny. No. Okay? I think, it's but, his job to secure lives. I mean, well, on that can, note, probably don't joke I about also, people being shot. Fair, I also that's like fair. To note, I also like to note that he can't be like a comic genius either because he can't come up with anything as good as Mitt's Mitt's. Right. So, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, he actually later hey, said, Andy, wouldn't it be the funny theater? if Mitt Romney had a company that made baseball mitts? We could call it Mitt's Mitt's. Same joke. And then the crowd gave him a standing ovation. <laughs> oh, so Lord. that happened. Yeah. I also just, one thing that bugs me about this is, is when did he, he said this at a St. Patrick's Day breakfast. So how does people know about this? Was this a very public St. Patrick's Day breakfast? Was it in front <laughs> no. of a crowd of fans? His daughter's got the biggest mouth. <laughs> like, wh- how, did this, how did this fucking story... You tweet about that. Yeah. How did this story make it to us right now? That's a good question. And I, I think, think it must have been a public thing. What a, yeah. even, he's also even, a sheriff, though. I mean, he's, well, a, that's, he's that's like kind b- of a public mm, figure. Barely. Public, fucking barely. Public figure. I don't even think that sheriffs, sheriffs are public figures. Sheriffs are sometimes figure. elected, though. Yeah. yeah. By who? The, the people law, yeah. the old sheriff? By I thought the, the old sheriff just gives you the badge. No. Well, that, yeah, that's, what it, well, <laughs> that's I, how it works. That's how it used like, to work. You, you that's how it should the, work. If you shot the, the sheriff sh- of Nottingham would just make you the sheriff. <laughs> He'd appoint you as deputy, and then when he died, you ate him and then became the new sheriff. Right. Mm-hmm. There, yeah, there, was the, there is that old rule. Yeah, like, it's if not you like the Dread Pirate Roberts. <laughs> right. If you kill the leader, you become the leader kind of thing. I thought that's how that works for sheriffs. No. Still. No. I guess my point is, though, who gives a shit what a fucking sheriff says at Breakfast, like they could say whatever bullshit they want. Yeah, but you're the beat writer at Plymouth, Massachusetts. Like, what are you, co- like, what are you doing for a job if not going you know. to the St. Patrick's it's Day like, breakfast? This, this man might fucking resign over, like, you know, like he's not going. To. Yeah, he's no, clear, he's sick no. of his guns. Not not Massachusetts stock. They're stubborn. Joseph D. McDonald Jr. It could have been guy's worse. Got a temper. I guess by him saying like he should go to the theater because he's black, and then that would have been really bad. That would have been racist. because he's black. Yeah. He should say he should if he said he, he like that guy should have got shot he because he's of his race. Oh, if he made it a racist thing. Yeah, that yeah, would I'd, be worse than the fact he just doesn't like. Him. Right. Yeah. yeah, that'd be worse. Uh, yeah, I mean it's all it's all like unfunny and stupid. I don't know. Yeah, it would never. Are you, if you're trying to improve, there's two issues. Uh, what would be worse uh, to make it a worse joke, or what would make it worse as like a worse thing to say? I would laugh harder if it was punched with because he's black. <laughs> That would improve that the joke. Had, but it was no, there was no context to it at all. It wasn't yeah. brought up before. You know, because he's black. <laughs> no, because am I right? Am I right, guys? That's kind of higher level humor. Than or I maybe think this guy's it might be funnier if he was just like Abraham Lincoln said he should go to the theater, but he told him to not talk so much during the movie. Now we're getting to good <laughs> joke territory. <laughs> whoa, oh, hello, whoa, whoa. Good, whoa. Joke good joke territory. Good joke territory. Yeah. See, that's the. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I'm not afraid to go there and be terrible. Go there. Uh, Caitlin, do we have one last story? One last story. And it could be about anything. It doesn't even have to be news. Just tell us a story. Yeah, tell mm. us a story. I heard you had a pretzel. Uh, I did have some <laughs> chocolate covered pretzels. Your first outside. pretzel oh, in, yeah. all, in your whole life. How uh, was it? Whole life? You know, it was fine. Um, Just fine. I mean, yeah, honestly. Okay. Uh, I don't want to lie to you guys. Uh, I'll look up Google News see if anything's late breaking. What about this thing? Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, what, about, what about Tilda Swinton sleeps in a glass box? Oh, what is this? You didn't hear about this? The no. actress Tilda Swinton is sleeping in a glass box as a performance art piece at the MoMA. Oh, wait, Tilda Swinton, uh, remind me what movie she's in that I... Uh, uh, ben- no, no, wait. Uh, she plays the the Benjamin Button she was in. 
She was in. That's, she's that, a very tall, spindly, pale, I redheaded that was woman. Kate, Kate Blanchett and right? Benjamin Button. Oh, maybe you're oh, right. Oh, that was Kate Blanchett. She was in Lion Witch in the, the Wardrobe. They're the same person, though. Okay. She was also in. She's wasn't in she in movie? Syriana? That was, Syriana, that was Kate yeah. Blanchett. Okay. She was in Orlando. Orlando. I, I actually don't think I've ever stopped to realize they're two different people. Okay, so. She was in Constantine. She was in. Uh, Constantine. Orlando. That's Kate Winslet. Okay, so these are. She was uh, in Titanic. She played Jack. <laughs> Anyway, not... some lady is in a box, and you should know about it. <laughs> she's like very, she's like known for like being very androgynous. Yes, and she's in a lot of movies that are like Oscar nominated but don't win kind right. of thing. Right. That kind of category. And she, she, I feel like uh, she's amazing. Sleeping she... in a glass box might be a step down in uh, level of work she's been doing recently, though. Well, it's like she also like infrequently does performance art, or like she'll uh, just do it here and there. She's a juggler and a street musician. The other thing is you won't know when she's going to be there. She's just, they're like, yeah, she's just going to show up sometimes and just sleep in a box. All right. Well, tell oh, me she, when she... she's going to be eating a box. Then I'll be interested. Wow. Of Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll be interested. <laughs> nice. I was actually in a sauna one time with, with Tilda, Tilda Swinton <laughs> and so were, Polly Shore you were oh, very and Rob Riggle there. and Andy Racka was also there. What, what the yeah. fuck? That All sounded right, like a fake to story. Explain. No, that's a totally <laughs> true story. So let's hear it. And you and you talked to Polly Shore about Stu. Yeah, he asked. <laughs> but talk to Polly Shore. I was telling you about Stu, and then he was like, "You mean the Borsk?" I was like, "What?" He's like, "Are you talking about the Borsk upstairs?" He didn't talk like that, but right. Uh, I was like, "No, there's a place around like around here that has like really good stew for like five bucks." Mm. Um, and he's like, "Oh, wait. cool." <laughs> Why did this happen? Yeah, we need to start it. You just had a fucking sauna. Yeah. Well, there's a co ed sauna. First of all, yeah. you and Andy Rocco. Uh, you we two went, sitting here. Right, right, just taking right. a so, like we went, No, we went to, uh, it was after the Del Close Marathon, and we were sweating out alcohol out of our systems at Where? the uh, Russian in, Turkish baths on uh, uh, First Avenue. Or uh, Avenue? In between First and A on okay. 8th. Or yeah. no, 7th. Okay. It is, it's a co ed place. Is right. it, I didn't know they had co ed baths. So in walks oh, yeah. Tilda Swinton and Polly Shore. Well, no, Tilda, yeah. Swinton, Together, Tilda Swinton was there. Rob Riggle chaperoning. Rob Riggle was there. Did and then he, so was Polly Shore. It just happened that everybody yes. was there. None of them were together. Did no, no. Tilda Swinton and Polly Shore speak? No. I don't. Th- I don't think so. But no. I wish. I yeah. want to see that buddy cop movie. Yeah, it's happening. So, it takes place in a so glass this box. chick is going to be in a glass box. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. and it's going to be anywhere, anytime. Well, at the MoMA, but yeah, but okay, but not necessarily any of their, not all yeah. of their operating hours. I like. I you know what? I actually like hearing that because yeah. I like when I like when hearing like big time actors. Yeah, do they're something. just like one of us. No, no, but when they do some kind of small, like small project, or you know, I kind of like it too. I like how mad it's making people for no reason. It affects, <laughs> it affects no one's life, and people are like tweeting, like, "How dare she just get in a box? Like, who cares?" David Blaine's affected by this. Yeah, yeah, yeah this true. is like She's taking really bread out of his, his fucking ghost children. He should be angry. Why but he m- should try to get Fiona Apple back. Why that are you be most in time. on my territory? I'm David Blaine. <laughs> Guys, David Blaine doesn't talk like that. No, he's. I'm like, David Blaine. I got two guns. I no, that's David, Clint Roddenberry. I actually like David Blaine <laughs> because he's like such the opposite of like a, a traditional magician of like being like really showy and like very like mm-hmm. boi- like boister like. Be- oh, he's, he's not like, Chris Angel. He's like not a good performer. No, that's why I really. He's like just it. like a no. He's just like a sleepy stoner. He's like. He's I like here's a dollar. Yeah, like, he's like he just give me the dollar. I do like yeah, yeah. I like it when he kind of mumbles on about magic he's seen. I've yeah. I've seen him do like yeah. I've just seen some chicken. I talk. like. Back to life. <laughs> Whenever I, see, I love it. He sounds a, like he's dreaming. He's yeah, a great, talk, like he's kind of nodding off all the time, and like maybe he just dreams. Maybe that's just it. Guys, what if all of us are just in figments the, of his imagination? We're in his be dream. Surprised. I buy it. I just like the way he cousin Brucey. In his close up magic is amazing, but like one of my favorite things close is close up he, magic. It's just magic sleight of hand on the street. Yeah, oh, yeah. on the street. But gotcha, when he gotcha. when he gets people, he's like, uh, can I show you something? Wait, can you come over? Uh, can I? I want to show you a track. Uh, and it's just that's like, exactly what he sounds like. Yeah, yeah. It is exa- he's just like, and I'm hey, just uh, like, it's, come here for a second. But can you imagine if someone like you heard somebody say, like, hey, come on, can you give me a, give me a, here a second? Can I, I would go right up to him. <laughs> really? I'd just hang out with him because you think he has weed. <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Right. You know who he's best friends with? Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. 
Capro? Uh, maybe, Capro. but <laughs> Woody a, Harrelson. A, oh, is he? He's oh, a course. My, scene about like partying around the city with Woody Harrelson. There's like a picture the of David Blaine, David Blaine, Leonardo, and like somebody else in like a whorehouse with their dicks hanging out. Aww. What? That seems photoshopped. <laughs> no. Why with their you dicks hanging that, out. Though? There's a picture of Godzilla. <laughs> And David Blaine, Benito and John Mussolini, Malkovich, all eating pizza <laughs> with their dicks hanging out. <laughs> with their dicks hanging out. It was Onto great. the pizza, the burning hot cheese. Um, I'm right. looking up who his friends are. Uh, Could you look up that dick pic also? Why are you on Wikipedia? You gotta look on Facebook look to see who his friends are. <laughs> you gotta look. <laughs> Friendster. Okay, but, um, David. Zanga. Yeah. Yes, let's let's sh- let's look up this picture on the visual medium that is radio. <laughs> Theater She's the, not oh, looking oh, that up. Just theater of the mind. Guys, we found the picture. It's incredible. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at it. You can really dick. see the veins. <laughs> Fact check. That's not true. I haven't found it yet. Um, I don't know. Maybe safe search why don't is we, on. Uh, why don't we cut to uh, Alan here and ask him, uh, what's your Twitter that you have that people can follow you at? Um, David Blaine. It's David Blaine. Uh, my Blaine Twitter fan. is at Alan Starzynski. That's mm-hmm. A-L-A-N. Mm-hmm. S-T-A-R. Z I N S K I. All right. There's lots yeah. of different ways to spell Alan. There are. And how do you feel about them? I feel like they're all inferior to the A L A N. I think that's the classic. I, it's I a like classic. It. It's yeah. the Celtic way. Some people do A L L E N, and it's like. Yeah, I'm like, come on. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you, a Karen Allen fan? Yeah. Oh. I am a Karen Allen fan. I mean. Cougar City. <laughs> uh, and you do lots of shows at the theater. You I do. I do. Here. April 25th, I've Cougar got a City. spank. All right. <laughs> of my one man show. All right. So go see it. Yeah. Go see it. Caitlin Bits a Guy. My Twitter is at Caterade. C A I T O R A D E. All right. And I also have a spank this April at UCB Theater, April 18th, <laughs> called mm. 18 Things the DePandy Sisters Don't Talk About. All right. Nice. I uh, That's great. Go see that. And, Andy, uh, do you have a Twitter? Well, I wanted to get to Jason. Andy's, oh. Andy has to go okay. last. He's the host, so his Twitter goes last. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so my Twitter remember it. is yes. mm-hmm. at J Shebs. That's J S H E B S. Uh, or twitter.com backslash J Shebs. Either way works. Uh, and you could check out shows that I write. On Maud Night at UCB Yay! Theater, Mondays at 9.30. I'm on a team called Family. The Family. Yes. The Family. Great we're, team. We're the we're so good, you guys. You should check us out. Yeah. What about me? At Justin Bieber. <laughs> oh, Justin Bieber. Yeah, you didn't here. add a lot. Justin at Bieber. All. Where's your, well, when's your spank? Oh, my spank, it's on. <laughs> well, he directed mine. Yeah, I directed her spank. Check so out, go, check see out that. go see that. <laughs> uh, Sorry I didn't contribute. Um, I'm texting. <laughs> Uh, you can visit our show's website uh, at www.getinformradio.com. You can email us there. Uh, you can follow our show. Michael Jackson, why are you doing that Justin Bieber impression? <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter, also at UCB, uh, uh, Get Informed at UCB on Twitter. And you can follow me, Andy Rocco, at Andy Rocco. Uh, thanks a lot. I'd like to give a thanks to Jason mm-hmm. and Ben. Uh, who contribute ben. stories to the show, and Lisa for also yes. c- kind of put together a lot of the stuff for the Thank show you, today. Lisa. Thank uh, you, Lisa. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. I think we're all done. Thank you, Lisa. I'd like to thank <laughs> Mr. Alan Zarzinski Woo! and thank Caitlin Bitsagai for hello, filling hello. in and reading the news today. Tried. And I also like to thank our beloved Swirthy producer. Swirthy. Swirthy. That's me. Jason Sharbiro. Yep. Uh, it's been real.